In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord hath filled the whole world. Alleluia. And that which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Welcome to this Mass at St Barnabas, Oxford, on this the Feast of Pentecost, when we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the Church and on the world. And on this Feast of Pentecost, we are scattered and at home, we are not together. But nonetheless, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. The Holy Spirit breathes upon us, comes into our hearts and into our lives afresh. And so today we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful people. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us, in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, 
Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who was at this time didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort, through the merits of Christ Jesus, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, one with our heart. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Alamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. O Lord, how manifold are your works. The earth is full of your creatures. When you take away their spirit, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure for ever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Dear friends, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptised into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Before Jesus had ascended into heaven, he told the apostles that they would be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So together with Mary, Jesus' mother, 
they devoted themselves with one accord to prayer. And sure enough, the Holy Spirit came with winds and fire and with a new boldness to preach the gospel. Pentecost, of course, being a Jewish festival in itself, tells a beautiful story about God's power and the Apostles' transformation in that room with Jesus' mother there also. But it's easy to think that the Holy Spirit all came upon them suddenly, all at once, in that space, and that was all. But of course that's not the case at all. They didn't receive the Spirit just that one day. They were immersed in the Spirit again and again. In fact, in our Gospel reading, we just listened to Jesus breathed on them in his presence and told them to receive the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts records at least seven times, in fact, that the apostles were filled with the Spirit. And this doesn't count all the other times that haven't been recorded in Holy Scripture. The same is true, of course, of us and of the Church. Although we receive the Holy Spirit in our baptism, we always need more of the Spirit. We need more of the Spirit's power. We need more of the Spirit's gifts to follow the Lord and to proclaim the good news wherever we are and whatever our context and whatever circumstances we find ourselves faced with. Jesus knew how much we would need the Holy Spirit too, and so even long before his ascension, he encouraged his disciples to pray for this gift, to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, he says, as recorded in Luke's Gospel, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit? And John's Gospel assures us that God does not ration his gift of the Spirit. There is always more that God has for us. There is always more of the Spirit. It never runs out and it's never held back from us. And so let us follow the Apostles' example. Let us believe in God's promise of the Spirit and keep praying for it. Even if we don't necessarily experience it or feel it, we keep praying for it. Not just on this special Feast of Pentecost, but every day. That wonderful ancient prayer, Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful people and renew in them the fire of thy love is all we need to pray every day to remind ourselves that the spirit blows the wind blows and the fire is given we might not be able to breathe on each other at the moment that's one part of the gospel reading that really strikes home at the moment Jesus breathed on his disciples and literally breathed the Holy Spirit upon him and our faith the Christian faith is very much a physical faith the sacraments are physical things they are physical experiences anointing baptism the Eucharist all of those things demand that we are together not alone and in many ceremonies of the church the bishop or the priest breathes on something to consecrate it breathes on holy oil for example or breathes on water in fact in the ancient church the, the bishop who was baptizing uh, new christians breathed upon them and breathed in their nostrils Gosh, can you imagine if we did that today? All of a sudden, those very 
tangible, physical, uh, tactile things have been stripped away from us because of this virus. And we ask ourselves, when again can we do those things that we held dear? Like touching someone else, shaking their hands or giving them a kiss. We have no answers to that yet. But, of course, the promise of the Holy Spirit is not restricted to physical action. It is fully symbolised and fully experienced in physical action and physical uh, contact, but it is not limited to physical contact. The Holy Spirit is nonetheless pouring out uh, this, the, the power of God within our lives and within our church as much today as last year or in previous generations. So we must let the Spirit come to us in new unexpected and extraordinary ways at this time, hard as it might be for us to understand. Now not only of course for our benefit but for the good of the Christian faith, for the good of our brothers and sisters, for the good of those who do not yet have a faith, and for the good of the Holy Church. Holy Spirit, make your home in my heart today and every day, is all we need to say. A blessed and a happy Pentecost to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us then and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge with the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to God our Father. Govern and direct thy holy church, O Lord. Fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is thy will. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Enlighten Stephen and Jonathan, our bishops, and all thy ministers with knowledge and understanding that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim thy holy word. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace. Guard and strengthen thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that she may put her trust in thee and seek thy honour and glory. Continue to bless those who administer the law, 
that they may uphold justice, honesty, and truth. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Heal the sick in body and mind. We pray especially for those who continue to suffer because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for those who work at the front line as well as for those who are sick, isolated, and lonely. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, and raise up the fallen and destitute. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Show thy pity on the prisoner and the refugee and all who are in trouble those who are forgotten and who feel that no one is praying for them. Hear thou them, O God. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died in faith, especially those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries of death fall at this time. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And we rejoice as we join our prayers with those of our Blessed Lady, St. Barnabas, St. Paul, St. Thomas the Martyr, and all of the saints, as we say, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our Father, God, all creation, to our goodness, we have this wine to offer. 
which in the mind are right through the hands that will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for it. Pray, dear friends, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify, O Lord, we beseech thee these our oblations, that being enlightened by the beams of thy Holy Spirit, our hearts may be purified from all evil, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Partakers of his most blessed body 
and love. Who in the same night as he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy family goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins, and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our pardon and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom the name, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour hath taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak the wonderful works of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. We humbly beseech thee, O Lord, that thou wouldest send down upon our hearts the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that we may bring forth fruit unto thee, pour upon us the inward dew of his blessing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank thee for feeding us with the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer thee our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of thy Spirit to live and work to thy praise and glory. Amen. The Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia. Joy to thee, O Queen of Heaven, Alleluia. He whom thou wast meet to bear, Alleluia. As he promised, hath Through the same cross. 